Spontaneous speaking video 26. So last night I was at this event called Gospel Fest. Um, it's an event that my school, Liberty University, holds every, I feel like the last one I went to was actually my sophomore, freshman year, and now I'm a senior, uh, although I'm taking an extra year of school uh, after this. But it was really great. It was very eventful. Um, Oh, you praise the the choir, the gospel choir that Jamila and Tay sing in and Kailisa, um, they performed. It was absolutely fantastic. It was just, it was great. If you want to see it, check out my Snapchat, but it'll probably be too late by this time. Um, anyway, I learned a lot from those events, or I was reminded of a few things that I just wanted to share in this video. And the overall arching theme of the uh, things that I've been reminded of were the benefits of prayer or the importance of prayer. And I feel like whenever I ask people or whatever I'm even asked, how often do you pray? The most common answer is not as much as I should. Now, I feel like almost any none of us would be able to pray as much as we should. But, you know, there should be like, you know, a good amount of prayer, a good amount of communication with God that you're having that creates a sense of, mm, no, I've been having good enough communication with my Father in Heaven that I plan to spend the rest of my eternal life with uh, um, to sort of, you know, understand where our relationship is at right now. And I feel like if you're not at that point, and if it's not being consistent, then that should be something that you can you should continuously work on. But I'm here to talk about a lot of the benefits that you can reap from having a healthy prayer life. And to me, it's just like having a healthy uh, communication with your significant other. Um, some of us, or a lot of us, if we go like, I don't know, like five hours not talking to our uh, significant other, and it's... Um, and we're not sleeping during that time, <laughs> then a lot of us get really upset. Why isn't he or she texting back? Or well, I wonder what they're doing, etc., etc. Now, God is definitely not like that. But I feel like if we're planning to actually spend the rest of our eternal life with God, then we don't want to get hit with the, oh, I'm sorry, I never knew you phrase that he that Jesus gives us in Matthew 7, 21, um, where he's like, all of these people come to him and then they're like, oh, but Jesus, didn't I do this and didn't I do that? I went to church. Uh, I, I read the Bible, you know, every now and then. Um, I, I said that prayer. You know, I prayed over my food and Jesus was like, I'm really sorry, but I don't know you or at least not well enough to spend an eternity with you. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And we all know where there's that one other place that you'd have to go to. And for people who don't believe in hell, well, that's another video for another day. But like I said, I'm here to talk about the importance of prayer and some of the things I was actually like a little bit reminded of for the importance of prayer was last night, I saw, I'm not gonna say any names and I unfortunately I can't even go into detail or else people would probably be able to like pick up on the types of people I'm talking about. But I saw couples of people, not like as insignificant other couples, but like just, you know, groups or couples of people who I have communicated with and they have friction or problems with each other. Um, so, like some of them just don't like each other for certain like behavioral characteristics. And it wasn't like anything like serious, like, yo, I'm about to fight this trick because blah, blah, blah. But it was just like, you know, casual things like, oh, I don't like the way this person like, st it's like constantly like doing this or this person's like constantly doing that, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, just kind of like, friction and then that avoids like that gets to a point where they start to like avoid interaction with each other it's like a you know unspoken sort of type of norm and last night during um some of the worship uh that we had during the gospel fest i'm not much of like an observer when it comes to worship i immerse myself in it as well but you can't really help but observe as well you know like it was just such a beautiful atmosphere of seeing everybody just in the spirit, like all of us in unity in Christ, just like praising God and, you know, worshiping him, reminding him of who he is and how much we love him and our dedication to him and all of that. And doing this all in like, as one community, it was just so beautiful. 
um, whether you're an ENFJ or not. You know, like everybody should value community. Everybody should value togetherness. And I just have such a deep appreciation for that um, type of harmony. And one thing that I peeped yesterday from several groups, I would say like about like four, are it actually almost moved me to tears on top of the atmosphere just being so full of the spirit was people that I knew had problems with each other coming together one-on-one -on -one and praying for one another. And it wasn't like a, okay, well, I don't like this person, Jesus, but I'm gonna go and pray for them anyway. Hey, what can I pray for you about, you know? But it was like a, you could just tell like there was sincerity behind it. There was a genuity behind it. And it was just so beautiful to witness and just look around and see these people like tears in their eyes and like just praying and like going at it for each other and then hugging afterwards and all that. Like it was a very, it was, it was so beautiful. And what I was reminded of was as the body of Christ, as Christians, we like whatever type of conflict that we have with each other, whatever type of differences, whatever type of you know, disagreements, whatever. When we come before God, that all evaporates. That all disintegrates. That all dissipates. That all, whatever. It, it all just disappears in short terms. And that is because an atmosphere full of God, full of God's spirit, is an atmosphere full of love. And hate cannot abide in love. Bitterness cannot abide in an atmosphere of love. Envy cannot abide in an atmosphere of love. Grudges cannot abide in an atmosphere of love. And I feel as if when we are walking in love, because love and God are synonymous, then we are walking in God. And if we are walking in God, then that means Satan cannot get to us. Satan cannot do anything to us to separate us, to penetrate us, to attack us that God would not allow. And yes, there are indeed times where God allows certain things. But one thing that you should also remember is that God is all knowing. He's all knowing. So if he allows something to happen in your life and you know that you're walking correctly with God because you speak to him every single day and you have that great relationship with God, you can have faith that if anything, it's just another Job experience. And for those of you who don't know the story of Job, you should go and read it in the Bible. It's a beautiful story. And long story short, it's about a man who God even, de God deemed this man so righteous and so strong and so uh, wise and just godly that Satan went up to him and was like, God, the only reason why Job hasn't turned on you yet because you haven't let me touch him. All you've ever, you have this protection around him, this hedge of protection, that of course he's going to be happy, but if you let me, you know, give him a little bit of scrapes, I bet you he'll turn around on you, he'll turn on you. And you can go see how the story plays out. Like, Job went through all types of hell, and yet he still came out victorious towards the end. Spoiler alert. But I still recommend that you go and read it, and just actually check out the details. But that is the difference between somebody, it, it just, that type of, relationship with God brings security to your future. The Bible says that God orders the steps of the righteous. The Bible also says that all things work together for good for those who do not love God. For, <laughs> for those who do love God and are called for, to his purpose. Um, Romans 8, 28. And the Bible also says that his ways are so much higher than our ways. His mind is so much more advanced than our mind. We cannot even comprehend a fraction of God's mind because it is just that much more vast. Everything that we know, God already knows. He actually allowed us to know those things because he's infinitely wise. Our minds are finite. His is infinite. And so that was just something that I was really reminded of yesterday, going back to the whole atmosphere thing, that when if we really call ourselves Christians, then whatever type of grudges that we have, whatever type of bitterness that we have, envy, um, strife, uh, jealousy, hey, uh, whatever 
type of animosity that you're dealing with. I would just... <laughs> I'm about to have people barge in. I might have to cut this. <laughs> Maybe not. Anyway, whatever type of animosity that you're like dealing with, having to deal with like other people, the Bible says that as a, as the body of Christ, we should all just get along. We, harmony should be our greatest value. If we're supposed to all be on the same team, then we cannot have division amongst our team. We have to all be together. Now, of course, there's going to be like, you know, disagreements and altercations and etc. like that. But... We should always be striving to, uh, to, to fix conflict. And I guess this can be summed up in some of the tweets that I actually uh, posted up this morning. Let me read that to you real briefly. Last night, I was reminded that regardless of your interpersonal problems slash differences, when you unite together in God's name, they dissolve. You know it is truly a divine power at hand when two who dislike each other come together to pray for one another and then love each other. That's because in Christ, there is no hate. There is no bitterness. There is no envy. There are no grudges. All that burns away in love. So if you do truly love God as you claim you do, pray for your enemies. Pray with them if they are down. And then watch God remove that friction. I mean, after all, I really only love God as much as I love the person I love least, Dorothy Day. I think that if we truly refer to ourselves as Christians, if you have any type of beef, if you have any type of pride that's keeping you from getting to reconciliation oh I'm, I'm afraid to say sorry to this person even because I didn't do anything wrong you know if that person feels like you did something wrong go and understand where they're coming from and if that person is truly a Christian as well then they should work towards reconciliation with you if you two are both in Christ and y'all both have those same values then your love for God should trump your pride that you have, oh, I don't want to go speak to that person because this is what they did to me. Don't be like that. Be Christ-like. And the last thing that I would say, just concerning what I was, uh, all that I was just saying, actually, I'm trying to find it real quick. It was a status that I posted. I was just reminded of it. There it is. I think society would benefit if more of us took the time to see where we were wrong in situations or even mistakenly perceived as wrong, owned up to it, and humbly slash sincerely apologized for it. In such a world, the other party would do the same, so there would be no longer fear, there would be no fear of losing face. I hope that my point was made clear today. And if you got nothing from the last uh, 13 minutes of me speaking, it could all be summed up in just, I don't know how many points, but point number one, if you have a grudge against somebody, whether they're a Christian or not, let it go. Grudges are the heaviest things to hold. And like I said, you only love God just as much as you love the person that you love least. Because God desires for us to love everyone. So the more you love the person that you love least, that is you loving God even more because you love that person through God. Because God has commanded us to love each other. Number two, I would like for us to start practicing not only praying more, that is so crucial. We need to pray more because that'll, that'll give us more security about our future. That'll keep us from, um, that'll help us abstain from sinful behavior and sinful habits and all that. We will still do wrong. I still do wrong. <laughs> my closest friends can tell you that. Um, and even my enemies could probably tell you that as well. But as long as you have a sincere and genuine desire to do right, and you continuously ask God every single day to help you do right, then that's, that's all that God wants. And this is kind of like an overlap with my uh, previous spontaneous speaking video on um, daily ointment to thorns and eating elephants. You guys can go back and look at that one if you uh, have the chance. And lastly, 
I want us to continue to understand where other people are coming from and then validate their feelings and just work towards reconciliation. Done.